All right. Hi, Daniel. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you? Thank I'm you for having me. Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. No worries. Uh, your bio is real short and concise, which is good, but uh, I'm going to have to dig in there to get some information out of you. Sure. Okay. Dig away. All right. So first off, best-selling author, award-nominated podcaster, book coach, and speaker. Every time I hear that term book coach, I always think of somebody sitting behind me at a desk going, come on, just one more paragraph. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, you know. we, uh, we crank the heat up. We have some towels to find people. We get the old whip out and just, yeah, we're, we're in the absence of a muse. A book coach will, will keep you writing. You can't be a muse on call. I mean, that's... No, so book coaching is basically if you... I mean, we kind of almost liken the analogy there to a personal trainer. Um, and that's essentially kind of what we are for authors, because when you first approach the page and decide to write a book, obviously, the for, for many people who are first time writers, you have your idea of what you want to tell, what you want to make the book about. But you have no idea how you're going to publish it, whether that's self-publishing or approaching traditional publishing houses. You have no idea how to look at sort of the marketing. You have no idea how to actually structure or get through the stages of writing that first book. Um, and then that's all of that stuff, you know, before you even hit the editing side and, and know where to go there. So a book coach is basically someone who is in the trenches with you, someone who guides you through how to write the book. Um, typically with my clients, I'll have a one hour video call with them once a week in which we kind of discuss anything they want to. And then throughout the week, I'll typically be editing bits of their work or, you know, guiding them on the process of getting to the end of that first book and how to bring it to um, publication. I tend to specialize more in self-publishing rather than getting people agents or traditional deals. Um, but that's kind of a roundabout way of, of explaining what book coaching is. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, about self-publishing versus traditional publishing. I know there's pros and cons on both sides, and I've spoke to other authors who have gone one or the other or are doing both, actually. For a first time author, would you recommend them starting out doing self-publishing? I don't think it's as simple as whether you're a first time author or not. I think it's more what are your goals? What is it you want to achieve um, as an author? Because I think that it depends how you work as well, because but the the main pros and cons are if you're self-publishing, you you know, you have full control of your book. You can write what you want. You can put the cover however you want to. You can put it out wherever you want to on the Internet in the format that you're happy with. Um, but of course, that doesn't always that's not always conducive to actually selling your book. Um, so if you take your book to a traditional marketing house, they have their channels, they have bookstores, you know, it's all set up to try and get your book into the hands of readers. Um, the difference primarily comes with, are you happy to go with the slower build, tip, like I say, typically or self-publishing, which is a bit more of a slower build in terms of you have to build your own reader base, you have to do your marketing, you have to do your finance, all the business relies on you. Um, whereas with a traditional publishing house, uh, normally you can get a bit more of a boost in terms of reaching more readers and getting that upfront royalty split and you know all the stuff that comes with that um but the the the, the line between the two is shrinking at the minute in terms of traditional publishing houses still expect authors to be marketing their book and being a part of that process whereas they didn't use it so much because self-publishing didn't exist so it's you know there, there are a lot of it's quite complicated to consider which way you would like to go um, and normally it just comes down to what the author's perception of each industry is. Um, I personally have, I'm solely self-published across all of my books. Um, I've got a couple of books through um, small presses that are all self-publishers who have formed small houses. Um, but I find that for me personally, that's a way to go because I like being in control of the work that I do. And I like the idea that the rights that I have for my books, if anyone approaches me and says, you know, we want to turn this into TV, cinema, whatever, I can negotiate these deals and I can do what I want with the stuff that I own. Whereas if I give that to a just traditional publishing house, I'm signing away those rights for a number of years, depending on whatever that contract is. Um, but it's it, it's very much debatable uh, still at this point, which is the best for who. And I think it's only once you inform yourself of all of the nuances, because it obviously goes much deeper than this, um, that you can then actually sit and consider which one's which. But the the problem at the moment, in my opinion, is um, there's not a, there's no education for self publication. So I've given talks at the local university about self-publication and it's amazing how little there is on the curriculums at that level about what the option is of self-publishing considering how much it's grown over the past 10, 15 years. 
The one complaint that I heard over and over again were from authors who had mixed genre books and the publishing houses didn't like it. And in fact, several of them were required to edit their book to cut out a romantic section or something so that they could fit it into thriller. Whereas if yeah. you're self-published, you can have 20 genres all mixed together in your book and no one cares. However, yeah. I don't know if that's smart marketing or not. I'm not sure because yeah. they don't have a miscellaneous section in the bookshops. <laughs> no, this, yeah. is, this is a problem that I, I mean, I've hit this problem myself. My first ever novel that I wrote, uh, co-wrote with um, a friend of mine was a bit of a, a, a foot in each camp of post-apocalyptic. Post it was a bit of sci-fi. There was sort of like genetic mutation in there as well. And it doesn't sell. Um, and you still, so you still need to be cognizant of the fact that genre exists. And if you want to try and reach certain readers, certain readers from different genres expect certain things. So I think no matter whether you're approaching traditional or self-pub, I think it's smart to actually decide what your genre is before you start writing the book. Um, and like I say, I can say that from experience. Um, but the the pro to self-publishing is that even if you do write this genre bending book, you can still build an audience around it. If you, you know, advertise in the right way, if you bring the people to you um, who like your stuff specifically and what you write, you create more of a brand for yourself rather than letting the book be the brand. Um, similarly, in a way to how people seem, to, well, I say seem to love, I'm a huge fan of Stephen King. Uh, but Stephen King is his own brand now. It's not so much what books he writes. It's the fact it's a Stephen King book. And you can do that with self-publishing on a much, much, much smaller scale and bring those people in around you and then grow that group itself. Because, you know, we're in 2021 now and pretty much whatever you like, someone else out there will like and there'll be 100 200 a thousand more people who like the same thing that you do so it's just a case of finding them and bringing them into your circle um whereas as you say traditional publishing they're very specific about what they know will sell and obviously as big businesses they have to guarantee that they're going to get their income come back well that's a good point about being your own brand rather than the book because at this point stephen king could put out a dog grooming book and people would yes. buy it you know, Number just one bestseller in 20, yeah. well, 20 minutes. <laughs> just because it's a, his name's on it. So sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Let's talk about a little bit about your podcast. What do you talk about on your podcast? Sure. So I have a, at the minute I have two podcasts. I have the Great Writer Share podcast, which is an interview format show, normally about 40 to 60 minutes long, in which I bring on authors from all walks of life. So I've had some traditional published authors on there, um, a lot of self-published authors, I've had some first time authors. So it's kind of the full scope of, you know, what you can expect from being an author. And the the specific thing that I try and focus on in that show itself is the mindset and the journey of, you know, are, are there any points in which you felt you had to, you wanted to give up writing? What was it that got you through that? You know, what are the tough blocks? Because I think there's not a lot of transparency in the writing community about what the journey is actually like. And I think people who are successful or have found some form of success are very keen to, make their journey seem very very earned and very not easy but you know triumphant and i think that the thing that unifies all writers and i think actually the thing that's most valuable to writers particularly first time authors or struggling writers uh is to be transparent about what that process looks like to know that you know everyone has those down days where you can't get the words to know that you know quite a lot of people do release books that just go to dead silence and people power through that and then they get success so I try and highlight a lot of that with the uh, the Great Writer Share podcast. And then I also have the Next Level Authors podcast, which I run uh, with my uh, co-host, Sasha Black. And that is basically, uh, it's a shorter form podcast. It's just us two. And that's us holding ourselves accountable each week. So each week we'll have a question or a topic of discussion. And then we'll outline the things that we're going to do the following week to help us as authors level up so that we can hold ourselves to account and pull ourselves along that journey. Um, and yeah, that's a lot of fun to run. Uh, one of the things I heard, you mentioned something about process and writing process. One of the lines that I liked from a particular author I interviewed was he said, part of the writing process is staring out the window. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that that's very true because sometimes you just have to disconnect from the pen or the word processor. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do that often? Do you stare out the window? probably not as often as I want to. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a part of it. I think when you're you know, deep in the trenches of writing your book, 
sometimes you can get swallowed into it and you burn yourself out or sometimes you just get to a point in which you've outputted all of the stuff that you had in you and you realize you have to recharge to get that next wave of, of words or story so i think yeah some I, I think it's hard because you know we're we're told from a young age that procrastination is bad but then staring out the window and actually thinking and considering and letting your mind do some work in the background is actually a really good way to recharge yourself and to to keep going because otherwise you will just burn yourself into the ground but i am um, I, I do spend as well not as much time as i want to but a fair bit of time taking those moments to go on walks and let my mind filter through things or like you say just sort of sitting back and looking out the window and just giving yourself a few minutes to to rest to re recharge i kind of equate it to a snow globe while you're riding it's like you've shaked the snow globe and everything is falling in the and sometimes you just have to put it down and let everything settle to the bottom before you can start again. Yeah, you can get, I think it's, it's very similar to life as well. I think we all have those moments where you've got a thousand things to do. You've had a week in which you've just been, you know, balls to the wall busy. And then you, you get your perspective shrinks. So, you know, all the things that you know is going to come up over the next year, all your plans and everything just get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so all you can do is focus on the next day, minute, second. And then, yeah, that's when you, normally you need to take that break or you know go on the holiday and recharge and then you can pull the camera back and see everything going and like you say that is similar in story you can get very into the weeds on um particular details that might not matter that much to the reader in the grand scheme of things and that's when you you take that time and that's that's what i do once I'm, i've finished a draft of a story I, I tend to take a week or two just to leave it in a drawer somewhere so that when i go back to do the edits i've had some time away and i can then look at the story from a different lens yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we've got about two and a half minutes left. I want to hit your book, Winter Comes. Yes. Is it? This is a whole series, right? Yeah. So it's a it's a serial um, because I want. To, yeah, I wanted to experiment with the old serial horror format that you know was around with Stephen King's Green Mile and going back to sort of even um, Charles Dickens in, back in the eighteen hundreds, and it's it was just fun short form. Well, it's a longer form story, but at the minute I've got, well, overall there are six episodes of this this serial that are all about 20,000 words each. So it's about 100 pages of story divided into or culminate into about 600 pages overall. Uh, can you give us a one minute synopsis? Yeah, so it's about an isolated town in the far reaches of Alaska, uh, surrounded by trees and the town itself is hit by a freak blizzard one night. Um, there's sort of paranormal play in there. There's a bit of... Uh, Inuit culture and law and Wendigos come at night and basically take over the town and then the, it's about the character's survival and how they deal with that night. Okay and the book is out and available? Yep the book's available now on uh, on Amazon so you can grab a copy there and I will be bringing out a collected edition later this year which will be available on pretty much every bookstore that, that's online. Well we do have to wrap this up unfortunately we are out of time. Do you have a uh, website you want to give out? Yeah, if uh, anyone wants to find out anything about me, it's all over at www.danielwilcox.com. And that's Wilcox, which is W-I-L-L-C-O-C-K-S. Okay, great. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. Thank